Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, Pepper Planting Day, Part 1. I say planting day, but I had so many seedlings, this took the best part of my whole weekend. Let's get into it. It was time to remove the remaining winter vegetables from my garden bed. I harvested over 13 pounds or 6 kilos of yellow, pink and red beetroot and a few bunches of spring onions or scallions. After removing all remaining weeds, I tilled the soil, added a few bags of organic compost, topped the bed up with tomato and vegetable mix and gave it another till to mix everything in. And this is what it looks like, ready for planting. I decided to keep my red ricotto plant as pods are starting as well as new growth. Here are some of the other containers that I topped up with tomato and vegetable mix, ready for planting. This is a self-watering container I made last season. I'm going to repurpose this and plant a Trinidad Scorpion Butch Tea which I topped a while back. The first thing I did was top up the container with some soil. I then made the planting hole and used the container to make a depression for a snug fit. Into the planting hole I added a tablespoon of Epsom salt for magnesium along with a tablespoon of blood and bone and gave it a good mix in. I then transplanted the seedling, pressing down slightly to ease it in and then on with the tag. All that was left to do was give it a drink of sea sol seaweed tonic to help reduce transplant shock and give a good soaking to allow the water to fill in the reservoir. I know the reservoir is full when water trickles down the excess drainage hole. I then moved on to planting the raised garden bed with the super hots I purchased from Bunnings and topped. These were in the greenhouse prior to planting. I also planted marigolds to help deter aphids and also make the garden look pretty. It was finally time to remove the seedlings from the shed, turn off the grow lights and begin planting. Two days prior, I removed the seedlings from the shed and left them under the veranda for a day and then placed them in the greenhouse. Another success this year was the addition of reflective material to the grow light shelving unit. I'll definitely be continuing this in the seasons ahead. And here are the seedlings. I was really happy with them. They all have beautiful lush green foliage. I should have actually acclimatised these better as we had sunny 32 degrees Celsius or 89 degrees Fahrenheit days when I transplanted. Some of the seedlings are showing signs of stress but I'll get to that later in the video. I want to show you two very similar but different seedlings. The one on the left is a topped red ghost pepper that was placed in the greenhouse along with a host of others when I transplanted into bigger pots. The one on the right is a Carolina Reaper that remained under grow lights. All my seedlings have been given the same feeding of sea salt and power feed but you can clearly see more green foliage on the reaper as a result of being under grow lights. The greenhouse, however, has double layer frosty style panels which omit direct sunlight. Either way, I hope they both serve me well. I then went on to plant the majority of my seedlings in one day. The technique I used to transplant my seedlings is borrowed from Rob over at Seven Pot Club. I've learned so much from his channel. Please check him out, I'll leave a link in the video description. Planting day for Saturday was done. Here's a brief tour of the planted peppers in the garden.
Fast forward to Sunday, I completed the remainder of my planting for the back garden. This has been my workstation for two days. It helps keep me organised. This is everything that I have been using to transplant the peppers as I demonstrated earlier in the video. A good quality blood and bone mix with potash, supermarket Epsom salts and the only mix I've been using this season, the Brunnings tomato and vegetable growing mix. I had bumper crops using this last season. It has extra blood and bone added, but surprisingly has great water retention and great drainage. Because of this, I didn't need to add any extra perlite to this mix. And finally, sea sole seaweed solution. I apply this to my seedlings every two weeks. This is great for transplanting to reduce transplant shock and also helps develop root growth and helps plants to resist pests and disease. Last season I grew Thai bird's eye peppers in this pot with great yields. This season I'll be planting a purple ghost scorpion. As you can see some of the portulaca seeds from the companion plant from last year have germinated. I'll be replanting new portulaca seedlings for companions so I'll be disregarding these. As with my raised garden bed and other pots from last season, I use a hand tiller to loosen and aerate the soil. This pot had standard potting mix in it, unlike the tomato and vegetable mix. So the potting mix is what I'll be adding to top up the soil. I have a 50 litre bag of premium potting mix and five litre bag of perlite. Unlike the tomato and vegetable mix, I find this potting mix really needs the extra perlite. I like to use a wheelbarrow for this task because it's easy and it doesn't make a mess. After emptying the bag in the wheelbarrow, I like to break up any clumps in the potting mix. I then add in the perlite and mix in well. I also find the hand tiller does a good job at mixing in the perlite as well. I backfill with potting mix right up to the top to allow for sinkage. I then transplant the pepper seedling as per my standard process. I also fill the remaining pots for the back garden with this potting mix. Here. I'm planting in a self-watering pot. Finishing off the wooden bench with some ghost peppers and other super hots completes part one of pepper planting day. Finally, I do have some concerns with some of my seedlings. A day after planting, it's still warm and after midday, I noticed leaves turning silver and some even wilting. I suspect this is due to not acclimatizing the seedlings properly. I am by no means an expert. I am not a master gardener. I'm always learning. If these seedlings die, I have plenty of others that I can plant in their place. With that being said, that brings us to the end of part one of my seed planting. The next video, part two, will focus on planting at the front of the house. Until then, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment, like and subscribe. And I'll see you same chilly time, same chilly channel.